Yo, cuz, how you doing? Steve Martirano. When you're starting out in business, how long would you last if failure after failure kept coming? Think about it. Because you never know when that break's going to come. When I started out, I used to sell sandwiches from my mother's basement, deliver them to the neighborhood. Right? That's how we got started. I wound up renting a spot in Northeast Philly in a shopping center that wasn't even on the street, was inside a development home of houses. Another mistake. I started a water ice business for extra income inside my takeout in Northeast Philly. No sit down, just takeout. Got through the winter time when the summer came, boy, it took off. Steve's water ice took off. I said to myself, now it's time maybe to get a sit down restaurant. So then I purchased a building. Another mistake. First, first, first when I signed my name to the papers and the place was mine, we were about to open the doors. I get a letter from the city saying they're digging up my street for one year. What the fuck? How are my customers going to come down if they can't drive down this road and they don't even know I'm here? Another mistake or another failure. So I passed flyers around in that neighborhood too. Before you know it, got through that. The summer came, water ice business, picked up. Did that for like three years. Everything was going good. Then I said to myself, hey, I want these people that are coming in here. Maybe I want to like upscale it a little bit, right? Make it a little more fancier. Make it a little bit more money. You know, I'm learning. Add a little more she-she-ish kind of food. Well, I did that. That was a failure. People didn't want that. Before you know it, I had to close the restaurant because I wasn't making any money. But I had this little window selling water ice. So now I'm scooping water ice for 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, a buck and a quarter for a quart 250 do that just to try to pay bills no other income coming in but that I said I have to do something so I went back to the original original tradition of what I got started with macaroni brajol sausages veal colors chicken colors no lamb chops no steaks and I built that up but I had to sell it because because I wanted a better life and I was getting in a lot of trouble on the street. So I wound up selling it, and I didn't make any money. I think I wind up with like $70,000. And I took a shot in Florida. With the $70, I had to put a deposit on a house, small, small house. I had two kids at the time and my mother. Then I had to pay the guy for his little business that I had to owe him for two years. I had no money left to open my doors with $40 and one credit card, okay? Keep it going. When is enough enough? When do you walk away or try something different, okay? Before you know it, I got my first, my first celebrity, which was Tony Bennett, who wanted to eat for free, told him no. Then Dan Marino came in with his lovely wife. I love both of them. They loved my place. They loved the music I was playing. And I didn't know anybody else before you know it, a friend of mine, Jerry Longo, who was running Foxwoods and Casino in Connecticut, and he said to me, guys, you want to come and cook for the Sopranos? I never cooked for big parties, five, six, seven hundred people. I went there, took my crew with me. We did it. It was success. I did that for five years, and thanks, Jerry, for that. Now, in my restaurant, I get Joe Montana, who falls in love with me and the food, he sends me to his house in Napa Valley to cook for his foundation, first foundation uh, party he had outside. Had to be 1,500 people. Did that. Before you know it, more celebrities were coming in and just started to get more and more successful. My point to it, oh, but by the way, by the way, I have thrown people out of my restaurant and I'm not saying I'm a tough guy. You disrespect me or disrespect my mother or my place, you're gone. Or if, if you feel like you deserve to come in before a regular customer, you're gone. 
So the first person I threw out was um, Liza Minnelli. Liza Minnelli. She 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 came in and she said something nasty to my mother. You're out. Frank Sinatra Jr. You said something nasty. You're out. Madonna tried to get in. I had Steven Tyler there, and the place was just crazy. She wanted to come in. I can't help you. I, I, I got people waiting here for two hours. I can't help you. She left, man. That's fine. But the point of it is, I never gave up. After all those bad obstacles, you can't give up if you really believe in what you're doing. Now, if you don't fucking believe in what you're doing, cuz, go find something else to do. But if you believe in yourself, you stand firm that course when you try to deviate to something else, and I've done that a couple times, that's not reinventing yourself. It's just making changes to what you were, what you're known for. And you can make those changes if you stay with the center of, of what your heart and soul is. So be careful when you want to upscale. Be careful when you want to do something different. You might fail, but you don't give up. You don't give up no matter what, cuz. Now we have four restaurants, two more on the way, and fast casuals are coming to airports. My point to it is I could have stopped a long time ago, but I didn't. Listen to your gut, listen to your heart, keep God in your life, help bless you over and over again. And the trials that you have now of failure are only to build your character up and make you a stronger person to succeed. And when you succeed, make sure you give back. Steve Martirana, subscribe to my YouTube channel, cuz, trying to keep it real.